Good afternoon. I'm uh, Mr. McQueen, Elder McQueen, Brother McQueen, Coach McQueen. Welcome to Braid for our youth ministry. Today we're going to talk about a topic that I believe is very important for young people to understand. Perhaps it'll help them to understand some of the things that take place in the church sometime and if they get a better perspective of it, they look at it from a different angle, perhaps their attitude, the mindset about church would change. Uh, we're going to have a prayer first. Lord, thank you for this day you bless us to see. I pray, Lord, that something that's said in this video will be able to enlighten our young people in a special way. And I pray, God, that our young people, adults as well, we get a better understanding that man have been placed in position by God and that man is not God, though sometimes men get, get to the point where they feel like they can do things because of the position they're in, feel like they can abuse people, mistreat people, do whatever they want to do without being accountable. We pray, God, for those leaders like that, that they will be delivered from in those areas. We ask you, God, to bless this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the title of my lesson today is going to be, When Man Became Your God. If, if, if you did, in the, in the event that you decided that you were just so fascinated by this man, whether it be a preacher, whether it be a coach, whether it be a teacher, or it could be, when I say man, when I say, when I use the word man today, the word man will mean two different, will mean man and woman. Not just man, man and woman. But I want you to think about it. There has to be a separation between God and man there has to be an understanding that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God the Father. We have to understand that man was in the Christian realm may have been called by God to do specific things but man is not to, to attempt to take the place of God and for some people, specifically in the body of Christ, this becomes a challenge. Now we're going to read some scriptures today of some people that, 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 that were common to God. Everyone that's a part of a, of a church body should have someone who, and whom they're accountable to. The way our judicial system is set up, there are different people that are accountable to different people. We have our government, a balance of power, where people, everyone is accountable to someone for what they do while performing those duties and what they fail to do. But often we see that there's sometimes we have a problem that lingers there sometimes within the, within the church itself. Sometimes men get to the point where they feel they've been preaching for so long, or people feel they've been in a certain position for so long. Men, it could be men or women, brothers or sisters, and they feel that because of the, that position they're in, that they've earned the right to be a dictator, they've earned the right to mistreat people, they've earned the right to be able to do anything they want to do, and no one has any right to question them. Accountability, I'm going to give you a short definition of accountability. Accountability is defined as being accountable, being liable, and being answerable. So if you're put in a position, understand that you may be, even though you're put in that position of authority, you are still accountable to people, to someone. 
All leadership should be accountable to someone, especially in the government and especially in the church. Now that's a question. If a group of people came to the church and said, we're gonna order, we're gonna order the church, would the leader of the church say, I'm not going to give you the documents? Probably not. What if a member of the church came and said, Pastor, uh, co-pastor, whatever, I would like to uh, know where this is going. Unless the leader says, I don't think that's any of your business. But Pastor, I pay tithes, I give offerings, I do these things. Now I said, why, 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 am I, why would you tell me these things? But if someone from the legal system came out and said, okay, we're going to audit, right? Then we want you to, then, you, then they give, give it away. It doesn't seem right, does it? All leadership should be accountable to someone. There should not be dictatorship in the body of Christ on no level. Now, sometimes, let's say for instance, let's look at leadership in the church. Accountability. Of course, first, a leader should be accountable to God for whatever you do. Every leader should have someone a covering, someone that are uh, there to kind of, you know, to kind of like help keep them in line. Someone is going to be honest with them and begin to tell them and it seems like they're going off course. And some okay, and also in church you have the senior leadership who has to have a covering, who's accountable to this covering, accountable to uh, God. Then you have cell leaders, and the people that work with the cell leaders are accountable to the cell leaders. Let's talk about accountability to congregation. There are times when, when senior leadership and leadership in general should be accountable to the congregation. Specifically when, when events and issues t take place that become controversial within the body of Christ. Issues that question the integrity of the leadership should be answered speedily. There's also a time when uh, the church will be, have accountability to uh, the law. There are times when the church, the church have accountability. The church itself should have accountability to the community. So there's a lot of accountability that goes around, but everyone should be accountable to someone. And in the last year or so, last year, there was a lot of problems with leadership in this country, abusing the authority. And many people just don't want to talk about it. They said, just pray for the person and this, let it be done. But look at the effect that it has taken on the country and look at the effect it's taken on the church. There's a lot of distrust that has been embedded into the body of Christ because people won't talk about things that they should talk about. Now, should, man, should, should you get to a point in your life where man become your God and you find yourself looking the other way because this, this is a man of uh, so-called honor or this is a man or woman of uh, you consider integrity but the action that they're taking is ungodly and the action that they're taking is sinful okay now now you find yourself dealing with something here When you choose to turn your back and see evil, and that would never really happen because of this specific man or specific woman, you may well be on a course in which man began to become your God. And you never mind the standard that God has laid, laid out, but because you put so much trust and come in this man or this woman. When they began to sin, 
you look the other way. When you, when man began to become your God, you began to worship him or her. When people, be, when people become the center of your faith, you begin to think like a puppet. When people begin to become, man begin to become your, your God, you begin to feel like you're trapped in a box. Because everything you do is going to be centered around these people, whoever they may be. In the body of Christ, when your man began to, when, 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 when man, even leadership, when leader began to be your God, you, you go to church and you hear the word of God, but you don't study for yourself. You see no need to search the truth because you say, there's no way that my leader will ever make a mistake. When man becomes your God, you begin to accept that there's two standards. One standard for those that are high, high, who are held in high esteem in the church, and another standard for those who don't have titles. You begin to turn your, your head to the truth. Because of this man's title, this woman's title, they get a pass for sin. They get a pass because they paid so much money. Give, it, it, because they get you know, a pass for sin. Because they, they get a pass for sin because all of a sudden, Man has become your God and you now have a respected person. When man becomes your God, little by little, slowly by slowly, man began to gain control over you. He began, he or she began to control you. Control is not the same as submiss submissiveness. Submissiveness is, is when you willfully surrender. But fear and intimidation, fear, intimidation, and manipulation by man is not something, it's not really just willingly. It's forced. Forcefully, your, forcefully, your freedom is being taken away from you by man because man has now become your God. You can sort man before you can sort God. You, you look at when man began to sin, you turn your back and say, well, the word must not must not been meant for him or her. Because he's a, he's a pastor, he, she's an elder, he's a, a minister or whatever. Or let's say out, out in the, out in the uh, civilian world, coaches, uh, doctors, lawyers, all these people who are in these high positions, when they break the law, you want to turn your back because of their position. This is how people act when man becomes their God. When man becomes your God, you surrender your freedom of choice. God, now God will never take away your freedom of choice. Man has no right to take away your freedom of choice. Unless you go out in the street and you, and you, you break a law and you, you, know, you, you deal with the law, but within the body of Christ, man should never try to control you or take away your, your freedom of choice. When man becomes your God, you begin to fear him or her and not reverence him. Fear and reverence, fear by virtue of feelings, Reverence is respect. You, 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 submit to, you submit to people because you reverence and respect them, but not out of fear. When man becomes your God, when man becomes your God little by little, he begins to feel that he has control over you. And when the first time you, you say no, he says, how dare you? I've done so much for you. I've made you. And when you allow people to have that much power over you, when you begin to say no to them, they begin to mistreat you. When man becomes your God. When man becomes your God, 
he becomes all that's important to you. What he, the way he treats other people, whether it be treat them bad or you treat them an evil way, that you 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 just turn the other way. Because now you're worshiping man and God has become second in your life. Please listen to what I'm saying. Learn to follow God for yourself. You have a God. You, you, have, a, you have a Father in Heaven who is your Father. You have the Son of God which is Jesus Christ. Man has been placed in a position by God to do a work. But man is, a, is accountable to God first. And we're going to go through some scriptures and we're going to find out that man is not necessarily where we put them. But man is in a place where God has placed man. We must learn to, to follow God for yourself. You must learn to read, study the scriptures and to follow God for yourself. You only follow man as long as man is following the Word of God. When man began to mistreat people and began to uh, sin and steal and do different things, there's a time when you have to cut the fellowship. When man began to reject you because of your stand for Christ, it doesn't matter who it is, be it the preacher, the pastor, the it doesn't matter. It could be the elder, be a brother, not say whatever. Anytime people within the body of Christ begin to reject you because you stand for the truth, okay, use that rejection as a determination to be strong and yet stand for the truth. When a man when man when man begin to despise you because of your stand and refuse to speak blessings on your life then speak blessings on your own life. And stop giving man so much control of your life. Stop giving man so much of the say-so in your life. Seek God. When man becomes your God, you, you, you become trapped. When man becomes your God, man will usually give you accolades. And they'll tell you, well, you know, the favor of God is on your life. The favor of God on your life is not necessarily the same as man's favor in your life. Man, God can use man to bless you in some areas. But understand this, brothers and sisters. There come a time if man have a fallout with you, man is going to withhold those accolades. He's going to withhold that favor. But God has many channels in which to bless you. So a man, so a man choose to, a man choose to discontinue his favor towards you, know that God has many channels yet for you. Speak positive on your own life. When other people reject you, continue to speak positive in your life. Speak faith to your own life. It's important to understand that man is with limitations. It's sad to say that we have a lot of people leadership in this country and all walks of life and all kinds of different places who have abused their authority, stole money, mistreat people, lied to people, Lied to the congregation, lied to committees, lied to the courts, and have misrepresented their position. Whether it be a position in sports, a position in, in, in even law, in, in the law enforcement, people have lied, used their position in an abusive way. But when the church began to do it, it's really a time for mourning. When church leaders began to use the pulpit for their own gain, 
when preachers begin to feel like they can they can mistreat people and they they break them down and tell them to leave. When they begin to feel like, you know what, I can do what I want to do with God's people and feel no remorse. That's a sad thing. But it happens a lot in these days. So you as a child of God, you need to understand that right and wrong, the scripture, sin is sin. You need to understand that God does not have two sets of rules, one set for the preacher and one set for the for the, the lay member that don't have a title. Just recently, something happened, I think, in one of the football teams and played the football team with the commissioner came down hard on on the coach and everything and a lot of people were surprised. But the word of God said when much is given, much is required. If a player gets in trouble for breaking the rules, then so should the coach. If a member of the church is asked to get up and, 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 and apologize to the church for some things they did that are just uh, were just unchristlike, then why would it why would it seem to be beyond a leader for him to get up and admit his faults? People don't talk about this because there are so many people in church who are afraid to talk about things of that nature. Everybody needs to be accountable. Every now and then, preachers need to get up and to, to the congregation and say, you know what, I messed up on this one. If you get up and tell people that you messed up on it, even as a coach, you know, I, I tell my players, you know what, I messed this up, I, I should have done this one. I could have called a timeout and we could have worked this out. I messed this up. They respect me more. But when you're a leader, specific in the, in, in, in the body of Christ, and you're constantly doing things, and you don't have enough courage to get up and admit your faults, you only hurt the people around you. Accountability is for everyone. In Genesis 3.11, God is going to come to the garden, and he's going to approach Adam, because Adam is hiding. Now Adam is a man that was given responsibility to do something and not to do something. Just like in church leaders are given responsibility to do things and to do things. You do this according to the scripture, according to the scripture you don't do this. So in Genesis 3 and 11, and God said unto him, Adam, who told you you were naked? Had thou eaten of the tree whereas I command you not to eat? When God came to the garden, he knew by the reaction that something was wrong. And now God was requiring accountability from Adam. Now Adam replied, basically, the, the woman that thou gave me to be with me, he blamed it, of course, Adam blamed it on the, on the woman. But this is an example where God is requiring Adam to be accountable. And later in the scriptures, he required that Eve be accountable. And when we ask this question, why, if Eve knew nothing about the whole thing, why would God go just to Adam, why would God go to both of them for accountability? So here, here, here in, in, in Genesis, is God going to Adam and Eve and crying to them and, and, and calling them to be accountable for the action that they took. Numbers 20, Numbers 20, 11, we're going to talk about Moses. God gave Moses instructions to speak to the rock. Moses, I'm going to take Moses I'm going to equate Moses to any, I, I can equate Moses to maybe a priest, I equate Moses to uh, maybe a bishop, uh, maybe an elder, or someone in a leadership position. Let's equate them to that. Moses went up and got the, ten, the commandments. Moses was on holy grounds. God had placed 
Allah is responsibility on Moses. Moses became angry with the people at some point. And in Numbers, after God instructed Moses, Moses to speak to the rock, here's what happened. In Numbers 20, 11, and Moses lifted up his hands and with his rod, he struck the rock twice. God didn't tell him to strike the rock twice. God didn't tell him to strike the rock. God told him to what? Speak to the rock. And the water, the water came forth and the people drank. And the animal soup. Now, Moses was disobedient. Because God told him to speak to the rock, not smite the rock. Now, accountability. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron and said, Numbers 20 and 12, And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron and said, Because you believe me not to satisfy me, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation to the land which I have given them. God, there's a, there's a accountability to God. Every leader, every preacher, everything you do, is, we have, there's a accountability to God. But, but, but before I finish today, there's also accountability at times that the leader has accountable to the people for sometimes things they do and also fail to do. Because the leader himself does not make everything happen. It takes a church, a body of people, believers, to, to, for certain things to happen. A body is full of many members. There are many members in the body. So a leader is not to be a dictator. A man is not to be a dictator of God's people. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron and said, Because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of, of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring the congregation to the land which I have given thee. Moses has gotten too strong in it. Moses began to take things in his hands. Now he puts himself in a position of God and says, You know what? I'm going to do it this way. I have all these people under me and I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it my way. First Samuel chapter 15. Samuel God gave Sam, Samuel the prophet Samuel God came to Samuel and said Samuel I regret that I have set up I have set up Samuel. Excuse me. God came to Samuel in 1 Samuel 15 and said, Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel, the prophet Samuel. He said, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king. Now, I believe today God has greatly regret that he had placed some of the leaders in position because some of them are, are doing what they want to do. They believe it's their church, they believe it's, it's, it's their people. Are, no, 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 no. And God is holding people accountable. And there are saints who believe that if they speak about wrong things that are happening, that God is going to punish them. No, you can speak about unrighteousness. You can stand on the word, the, the word of God concerning unrighteousness. Just don't be beaten down God's people. Don't beat down your leader. Don't beat down this person. Don't beat down your brother or sister. But as far as, as, far as you recognizing and admitting that this is sin, this is unrighteousness, this is a misuse of authority, especially if it's in the Word of God, God's not going to punish you for standing up for the truth. If God was going to punish you as a lay member for standing for the truth, then what good would the Word of God be? The Word of God is based on truth. 
That's what it's based on. And sometimes people will get will, will get asked to leave church because they stand up for the truth. And that's okay. Sometimes people lose their jobs. Christians lose their jobs because they stand up for the truth on the job and they lose the job. But God bless them with another one. So if you're situa you had a situation where you stood up for something that this, where there was just unrighteous in the church and they tell you to go, then God's going to bless you to get someplace else too. But you, got, you, you, you should not have to choose between God and man. That should be a no-brainer. Choose God. So Samuel went about doing things his way. God said to Samuel, he said to Samuel, I mean, so, I mean uh, so, uh, Saul went about doing things his way as a king. So God was spoken to Samuel and said, Samuel has turned his back from following me and has not performed my commandments. I was God was saying, God was saying, Samuel, Saul is doing his own thing now. There was a time when, when, when Saul was small in his own sight. See, here's the thing. There's a danger that people build man up so much that at a certain time a man don't know how to deal with that, he began to feel that he is a God. And that everybody should bow down to him. Key point. When Jesus was tempted by, by Satan, the last one second the last act of the last act of Satan of temptation Jesus, Satan came up with the ultimate purpose was to get Jesus to bow down to him. Now if Satan wanted to get Jesus to bow down to him, and that's the kind of spirit he is, then that same spirit I want people to bow down to them is probably in the church. But some preachers want to be worshipped themselves. If you disagree with me, I'm going to kick you out. In all walks of life, in the government, you have people in the government who who advise the president, who advise different ones, because the president don't know everything. We have a very, we have a very strong president. Even though people knock him down a lot, we have a very strong president. But he doesn't know everything, but he has advisors. Now the president is not going to do this, he's a smart president. But if the president was to fire everyone, every advisor that advised him not to do something that would be detrimental to the country, and he surrounded himself with nothing but